Hello, it's Zara. This doesn't need to be here. Anywho, today I'm going to be painting this box that I created um, from, from a wood burning. I just wood burned it. The basic outlines of some shapes, some moons and stars and suns and the evil eye. <clears throat> going to use three colors. Traditional burnt umber, glorious gold, and white. And I'm going to do this by floating the color, which is my way of shading. And it's just, it's a more light way to go than just filling in the piece with the color. You get a more light, um, and, and what I liked about it, it makes it kind of feel like it's actually wood burned in a certain kind of way. Because it doesn't look as, well because I add the white and gold, it kind of does have a painted feel. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the burnt umber. Let's just put some darks on here first. And there's really no rhyme or reason for me these days. I'm, I'm trying to create my own designs, which is not as easy as you might think. I am a decorative painter and have done that for years and I've kind of learned how to do other people's work very well, but when it comes to my own, oh, I need my water bucket. So I basically, I'm gonna use oh, the floating technique. And those of you who watch my videos know that this is, uh, my water's disgusting, I hope you couldn't see that. Um, I put out a little puddle of brown and I use an angle brush. And this is a 3 8 inch angle. I'm gonna go up a little bit. This is a little bit bigger. This is a half inch angle. And the idea is to get a graduation of color. So I want the piece to be darkest. Let me show you this one. Up against where it would be shade shadowy in the nooks and crannies type thing, you know? And then brighter on the tips, I'll highlight with white. So, but this is not um, professional, this is whimsical, this is my design, it's for me, or possibly for a gift for someone, so I don't get totally, you know, because sometimes there should be a light source and all that stuff if you're doing traditional painting. Now, what I'm doing is I'm corner loading my brush, see a little hair there, and I work the paint into the bristles from darkest where I, where I touch the paint to, and it wears it, it floats across the brush in other words until the end over here which is just water. I'm going to do it again because I forgot to show you. So I go into my water bucket then I blot on a paper towel and you could kind of see and there's still water in my brush so the paint is now going to float across the bristles. I corner load it then I put it down, and this is uh, called a paper palette, and it's like a waxy kind of surface. And I'm working the paint into the bristles by going back and forth like this. And I move very fast, you guys. It's just the way I am. It's my nature. And there's a lot of paint here, but there's also water. And then if I have too much water, I can always mop it up with a mop brush. But I'm going to go to my piece, and I'm going to put that dark corner that I, and I'm going to put it right up against that line, but all the bristles have to be on the surface, or it won't have the ability to float, because I'm putting down paint and water. So I'm going right back. I just like a, a dark float, so I'm going to start this time up here, and I pity pat it. I could just pull it, and I might have to do this again because I like it dark. I like it to look dark. And see, because I said, as I'm saying that, I put my brush in way darker. So I get impatient. And I, I don't need to be. I can let this process unfold the way it's meant to and not rush it. So I'm going to try be present in the moment, enjoy the process, right? But I definitely had more 
paint, more pigment I should say, on my brush in these areas than I did initially, I'll come back and darken that up. But I'm just going to go around each of these lotus flower petals and I'm going to shade them along the bottom and up this one side that it's like touching the other petal because it's kind of under that, right? So this side is on top, so that would be highlighted. This side is underneath, so it's going to be shaded under there. And we're just going to put it right up there. And I just leave it. You can actually mop every float you do. I just don't. I'm lazy and I, <laughs> I just don't. I mean, if I'm getting the desired result, I don't need to. I mean, some people might feel like it's too dark. I'm, I'm, I like it. I'm a heavy hand. I say that every video. See, that's why I haven't been posting my videos because I feel like I just repeat myself. And um, not a lot has changed in my technique as far as this style of painting. I haven't really tweaked anything. Um, I'm going to go along this little twirly just on the bottom here because I'll put gold in here or maybe some white. We'll see. And I'm kind of following along to the other ones I've done. I have a Hamsa hand here, this guy. I've, I've painted this eye many times, so, but it still changes, I'm telling you. I can never do it the same way twice. I may end up putting a little in between each one so that when I do these teardrops, they pop. And I think I'm going to do those gold because I didn't have them on here. I don't have them on any of my other ones. I just did dots here. So the teardrop is something new that I added. I need to... I kind of just want to paint the eyelid gold. I'm going to paint the eyeball brown. So just right here. And right here for now. Um, the leaves I want to do, I kind of want to do them, I think I'm going to do them brown and gold. So I'm going to just put some brown at the base of the leaves. And I'm going to tip them with gold instead of white. See, and I, if you, if you ever feel like you went out of lines, I can't find them. Oh, right in front of my face. I always have a Q-tip to just, and I should have told you before I started painting, I did seal this. The wood needs to be sealed so that the paint won't just absorb right into it. Um, and I used a spray acrylic, um, and I do that in the basement it's cold out right now. I think I'm going to go up here too. And over here. I don't, I need to tell myself to not get carried away because I love floating so much, but I don't want this to take, to be too dark. I want it to be bright. The eye whites will be white. The lid will be gold. I'm going to go back and just hit this top petal again because I just feel like it's a little less dark than the others. And I think I'm gonna leave, oh, I gotta do these um, leaves. I'm gonna leave the leaves now. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna move around to the sides. Uh, it'll start to come together. I might Put some color around the edge too. I don't know. All right, staying with this brown, I'm going to do my sun. There's a couple ways I could do this. I could just do gold and white, but I think I'm going to go brown and gold. And I may change it the next one I do. Each one is different. Um, so now that I've shaded on the left side of the sun, I'm going to keep all the shading on all of this stuff to the left, and I'll keep the highlights to the right. 
So let's see. Um, on the on stars, it's a little interesting. Um, I don't like to do all of the points. Like this one would be shaded because it's on. Uh, nope, I did it wrong. But whatever. No one's gonna know. <laughs> I'll try and do the next one. So in other words, if the highlight's coming from this side, I shouldn't have darkened that. So let's try this moon. Um, what color do I want to do my moon? I'm going to do gold and white on my moon. So I'm just going to do, let's do another sun. Uh, I'll try to do this star with the highlight on this side. Okay. So if the highlight's going to be over there, I'm going to shade here. And here highlight this would be shaded down here good enough I'm not gonna get crazy let's say so here and here the shading um, this moon is facing the other direction so let's shade it oop nope 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 I want to do gold I'm just gonna use gold on my moons because I just think it looks pretty. Let's do the other stars. So yeah, see how fast this process is so fast. And I do love that because like I said, I do have a tendency to be a little bit impatient. Um, we're going to shade the highlights coming that way. And even if there's brown on there right now, I can, I will pop that up with, and I could have even based these in gold and then put the um, and I have. I've painted them gold and then come back and shaded. Um, let's see. Like, I think I shaded this with brown and then I went over it with gold. With gold. I did all of these with brown and then I just tapped a little gold in there to pull it out. Same with the eyeball. I put a little gold. I mean, it's subtle. Um, let's see what I did on these. Yeah, I think, see, I put a little gold in the star after, I don't know, just to give it a twinkle. So, you know, this is not, none of this is set in stone. This is all personal preference and what looks good to your eye. And, uh, okay, so we're going to shade down this side and across the top. And then I like to do these little, see look how crooked that went. It's all right, I forgive me. I fell into the wood and it's a curve. Burning on um, straight lines on this curve was challenging. So I forgive me. And I think the overall is what I go for, you know. So I shade at the base of each one of the sun rays. And again, I could do this with, oops, went out of the lines totally. I could do this with gold first, and I think I have on some of them. But today, I am doing, I mean, I could do the one in the back, this one, with the gold. But I think I'm going to do a brown. These are my favorite little suns that I've been designing. This, like, separation of the rays um i don't know it's just it's really appealing to me i love it on my sugar skull for some reason on his little cheek so i'm just tickling this in there and because i put all the bristles on the surface water is on there as well and um you don't want to just go like this in other words you need to put all the bristles and it's i'm running out of water but I know I can get there. So that's that for now, although I want to show you something else. I'm going to do some shading up against on the outside of the moon. And actually, I could put it on there too. I think I am. 
because it would cast a shadow. I can do whatever I want, guys. <laughs> but if the shadow is on that side, that means the light's coming this way. Yeah. So I'm going to shade behind everything on this, on the left side. Yeah. So I just turned my piece over and I'm just going to throw some shadow on the background, in other words. See, there's like a pencil mark there. It's probably already been painted over, so I can't erase it now. Again, sometimes I'm, I'm noticing the graphite, whatever I'm using for graphite, because I trace on, I don't think I traced this. That could be pencil. Anyway, um, I think I did freehand, or you know what, for the stars, I used a stencil. Um, for the circles, I used a stencil, but... Um, Pencil comes off wood, ugh, not wet enough. Much better than the graph, whatever the graphite paper I'm using, I'm not sure that it's graphite or if it's um, carbon. And there is a difference of how it comes off the wood. All right, so for right now, I could go and I am going to up here and I'm just going to go right on top of those little um, comma stroke things teardrops because when I oopsie oops a daisy being a little crazy when I put the color on top of it it'll cover that the brown one on top of that but yeah this needs to be a little shaded same thing on the bottom just a little bit I just keep going right back to the little runway where there's plenty of water and paint. I don't want it to be too dark, like I said, because it, it'll the whole piece will just get too dark, and I don't want that. All right, but guess what? We're gonna do some gold. Yes. I'm pretty shocked that I've actually that the piece has actually stayed in the shot. So we're floating, but I am going to fill in, and I could, um, I could just fill this in, but I because it's bigger, I can actually shade it too. But for right now, let me um, just do the floating that I want to do. So we're gonna float on the other side of my sons the same way. I'm corner loading, and then I'm working the paint into the bristles. And this is a metallic, so you might not see it as clearly, but when I shift the piece you will see it I love it so much and I think I want to do gold on the stars I was gonna do white let's do the moon the back of the moon so this is kind of the shaded part of the moon I'm gonna do with gold it's just a matter of um, working around the piece and kind of keeping track of where I've shaded and haven't shaded yet. A little bit more. Where do I want to put it on my moon? This side. So to do this curve, I just stick and I follow the curve with my brush with all the bristles on the surface, kind of pivot it and stay in line with that edge. Do I want my stars white or gold? Let me see what I did on the other pieces. Some white and some gold. I like it like that. I think it needs both to be honest with you. Let's see. This doesn't have much white on it. Mm. 
most of them have some gold because it just looks so pretty because I'm going to use a little number two or three round this is a number three round and I'm going to paint in certain areas like these little commas are going to get filled in and they could be shaded anything can it depends on the look that you're going for I don't want to lose the burn mark so I just want it to touch the, the wood I'm also going to do the eyelid and I may come back and shade it oops but I don't ugh, I don't want it to go into the wood burned part I just need to be more careful. See, it went in there, but you know what? I can take a liner brush and some of the brown and just touch that up. You can go back. If I get it in the dark line, I do that a lot because I like to keep that separation. Um, oh, these other commas. This, this brush might be a little thick for just these little because I just I am getting it on the um, wood burn part if I had a smaller brush I could probably control that a little better um, once you start to do this stuff man it's so cool um, I think that's all I'm gonna fill in so in other words this is a liner not, not that one this one right here I'll get a little bit of that brown, which I need a little more. And it's a really thin, thin tipped brush. I'm just going to pull it. I could really wait till that dries, probably. Because I'm, I think I'm just um, pulling. It's not dry and I'm not painting over it. I'm blending it. Ah, I think I got it. And there's some here so this is just what I do to clean it up and I don't have to because it still looks pretty and that's not dry yet I'll do it when it's dry um, let's float the tips of the leaves with gold I'm just going to continue on with the gold real quick and then when we add the white boy that's when the magic happens so I'm going to tip the leaves I should definitely put some I'm gonna put some gold here and I'll put white like on the very uh, highlighty spots wherever I feel like it <laughs> really that's what it is it's whatever I feel like doing kind of just put it right over all that dark uh, that one doesn't have a lot of shading on it, does it? Um, kind of wimped out on these guys. I didn't put much shading at all. It's in the back. You're not going to see all of them together at, at all, so you can do what you want. Just have fun. Oh, geez. Oh, boy. <laughs> Being on a curved surface is a little challenging, but I will manage. I think that's good. All right, the white. Oh, the white. It's so good. I'm going to do inside these curls with the gold. Maybe I'll put a nice white dot there. Um, all right. Where's my white? Nothing special, it's just white. Ceram coat white. Blanca. 
No, just Blanc or Blanco. I'm so bad at languages. And we're gonna, I am kind of gonna fill in this eye white. I'm gonna do it with floats though. So I'm just gonna kinda, oh boy. I have so much paint on my brush. I'm just rinsing it off. It's okay, I just got it in there, okay. Blot, little bit of paint, Sarah, not too much. Oh boy. I am gonna do the whole thing, so I'll come back and do this a couple times to get it nice and bright, but then I'm gonna shade across the top in a minute to kinda see how like, it's a little shaded at the top. I like this one shows it much better. Anyway, I, so I lose quite a bit of the brightness. Um, so for right now, I can just go as bright as I want. And I'm right on those lines. Once you start adding the white, ugh, it makes me so happy. So now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to go to the bright side of each petal. So this side and just kind of, I can stop there really. You don't need to walk it across. Now the middle one gets it on both sides because he's on top. I'll come back and do the other side. It's best to let floats dry before you, you can pick up what you put down if you don't. Oh geez, oh Mary, hold on. I don't want to do that. All right, I'm going to take my time. Breathe. Okay, gently. And I don't want it to go too far down into the, just kind of the top portion of that side of the petal. I can always go back and darken it after if it, if it seems like I lost the shade. Oh my God, that is so dark, <laughs> but I can just touch that, touch it with my, okay. I just have a lot of color on the tip of my brush because I love it so much, that brightness. And it doesn't really matter if it's so bright it's just that I need to be consistent throughout the piece and if I have it bright there and then it's not bright everywhere then I have to go back and brighten everything else up <laughs> so it's just my own little I need to be consistent another life lesson that I'm enjoying so much oops I don't want it down there too much And watch how I pivot the bristles, okay? Because I'm tucking that water up against the edge of the of the petal, you know? See, like right here, I just want it a little brighter. Um, really doesn't seem like there's enough white on the top. I know where else I'll put it. Inside this swirly. And inside this swirly. And I can always, oh geez, it went right in though. I don't want it to go into the, you know, I keep repeating myself, you know. And inside this swirly. But I will darken those burns up if it if I lose the line. I'm gonna just go ahead on my pupil again, or my not my pupil. What is this called? Right here. It's just called the white of your eye, I guess. And then I'm gonna float across it. Um, I will put some gold here too. 
but it is starting to come together. I'm going to add white to my moons. I love this. This is really good. Just put the point right in the point. Put all the bristles down and kind of slide it back. And I'm right on a where the wood is cut. So but that's bright. Let's put some. I did this on all the tips of. I could really use a liner to do this. just a touch but it makes a difference. Let's put it on this moon. I'm running out of water. That's why because I haven't gone back into the water I just keep reloading my brush from the from the spot where I worked the paint into the bristles and there's plenty of water there usually but pretty soon it dries up so you have to you know Dress your brush again. Let's put some white here. And there. Here and there. Uh-oh. Here comes dogs. Hi, girls. How are you? I always have this bird. I'll tell you what. She is a very demanding little bird, this bird. Kiwi. Um... I don't know why it would be white over there. Um, yeah, if she hears me talking to the camera, to anybody really, she just starts peeping like, hello, do you know I'm here? Why aren't you coming to get me? And I have to get her. And luckily there is a, um, a door on that room that she's in so I can close the door and she will settle down if I do that. But for the most part, I, I don't even notice her on my shoulder anymore. She's just up there all the time. See how I'm just like tickling it in and, oops, getting it in. Well, Still want it darkest at the tip. I'm really not being particular, <laughs> specific and particular. That's particular. Anyway, um, yeah, it's um, good enough. That's what it is. It is good enough. Now, if I were selling this for sure, I'd really try hard and be more specific but I wouldn't even sell this if it wasn't like I'd probably be a lot harder on myself in the burning process so this is a little bit you know messier than I would like to think that I would do if I were selling it all right so let's go back up top and I am just going to darken up oh, wait first let me add gold to the eyeball and I'm just going to put that on I'll show you so I put the dark here and there I'm going to put the gold here and here. And I probably could have put some dark there, but I'm, I'm just going to leave it for today. And then I was going to float across here, which I can't really do now that I just did that. Um, but I can darken up any other areas that I think. So on this box, I just put some dark around the edges like the four corners um did i do another one of these now so I'm, i think i am going to just shade along the whole top and bottom to kind of pull it in and i can use i'm going to use a little bit of a bigger brush to do that this is a much bigger this is a one inch let me see if i have my trusty you can use a 
flat brush as well, you guys. You can all, oh, excuse me, you can use a flat brush to float. Um, I just like using an angle. It, it, I don't know. I f it feels better in my hand. I don't know where I put my trusty 5 8 inch angle, but I am going to use this bad boy. Um, it's a one inch. No, it isn't. It's a five eight, um, a three quarter inch. And because I can just hold a lot more water in here and a lot more paint, so I won't have to reload to get around the whole piece. So that's what I'm thinking, anywho. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the same thing. I'm going to go up a little because I don't want to come out of the shot. I'm so sorry. Corner loading into that dark brown just on the tip of my brush. Blend it in. Keeping, I never want this part of the brush to go into the paint. Only water is on that side. And I'm going to really load this up. I'm getting it nice and dark. I move the bristles into the paint, some of them, but I never go all the way in. And I kind of pity pat that way on the piece as well. I'm going to start in the back. Just because when I first put the brush down, it's going to leave a line, kind of, sort of. I can just kind of swivel and pivot. That's a trick too. Let's try to, uh, whatever. So I'm kind of just slapping it on there. And because the, the wood is this, you can see a line. They, they nailed or glued that piece of wood to this piece of wood. So all the wood takes the color differently. Even though I sealed it, Maybe I didn't hit that spot as well as I thought I did when I sprayed it. I don't know. So I'm going to just, this is kind of just like slip slappy. Um, and some of this is just very, like, it's watery because I, this brush just holds a lot of water. I love it. I love, love, love it. I need a little more color though. Right here. Now this is the front, so I just want to keep it consistent. I think I'll do the bottom as well, even though I am kind of darkening the wood a lot more than some people might like, but I feel like that because it's a wood burn piece, that is enhancing it because I don't shade with the wood burner. I only shade with paint. So I like that. And then there'll be the brights the inside wood will look bright. But see, you can see differences in the wood color already. Let's see this one. So see this? There's like dark pieces. I don't know if this is, see how this whole section is completely different color. So I think it just adds to the, to the beauty actually. I like that. I always have liked variation. So I know when I'm collecting my gemstones, when I, if I find a piece of crystal, I'm going to really want a piece that's just like Got a lot of variation in it, a lot of inclusions, a lot of whatever can be in there, versatility. Um, that's just my personal preference. Some people might want it completely clear or completely one color, you know. Um, it's funny because I haven't really been loving what I've been creating. Um, what am I saying? So... This process of designing hasn't been a bed of roses for me because I beat myself up. I look at my work and think it's not as good as other people's work or whatever those things are that we say to ourselves. And I do know though, however, because I've done craft shows and I have sold my work, that what I think of my pieces is not what other people see. It's so interesting because my opinion isn't right all the time, you know, my vision. And it's hard. It's a very hard thing. So when you're creating, I have to be kinder to myself because I could be creating someone's favorite thing ever, ever, ever. And just because it's not mine, you know, it's a very interesting uh, paradox that I, I'm finding in being a creative person. Um, you just have to let it be what it is and it's not 
bad or good. It just is, you know? And I mean, when you're taught to do things a certain way, you know, there is a certain way you want it to look. I get that. Like, you know, following the rules because the sun is there and this and that and the other. That's one thing. But this is not what that is. This is just me learning to love myself and accept what is changing the things I can change obviously if I don't like them but for the most part accepting what is and um, it's not always easy I just feel like this needs to be darker and it's not I got to just go up against that, I think. Okay. I just didn't like that that line was there. And I, I went around the star before, so I think that's what that is. Um, I'm going to think, do I want to be a little more? I think I want to leave it. I don't want, see, like I went to the left of everything before. Maybe I'll just darken up here. Um, here. This just looked really bright to me. And I could go to the left of my sun in a few spots to, what the heck, just darken it over there a little bit. Just a little. I, I get carried away and then I'll lose all the brightness and the brightness is important. I don't want to lose the brightness. I could put some dark here, but I don't want to. I think I'm going to keep it. All right, let's go up against the eye. And I think we're done. And then I can add some dots. I do like, I've been adding dots with the dotting with the um, wood burner as well. But I'm tending to le not always do that. I do like how it looks when I put paint in the dot. Well, this not specifically. Oh, like see how the gold looks? That was a burn dot, and then I put paint in the dot, and I do like how that looks. And then I just put regular white dots around that. Um, so I don't always, like the all these gold dots are just, they're not burned. Um, so there's a couple ways I've been doing it. Let's see. So, oh, I love this. So I made the circles, and then I put the dots in the circles, which I love. And then I didn't put any circles around the gold ones. And I just left the metal dot. Um, anyway, so I've done it a lot of different ways. I don't always like, like I probably won't fill in these. I'm going to leave them burned. But I think I'll add a dot to these. So let's see. Oh, first I have to shade. So I'm going to shade the, uh, I'm going to use this a little bit. This is a half inch angle. And I'm going to try and get this one and done, like nice and dark across the top. Um, I could go across the eyelid too. I think I'm going to, I'm going to go down to a smaller brush. Much smaller actually. This is a quarter inch angle. And this doesn't, for me, this doesn't hold enough water. It doesn't hold enough of anything, but it really keeps me in the zone. So I can't go too big with this. So that's why. I'll definitely fit in that eyelid, and that's what I want to, I want to get it nice and dark at the tip. I have too much water, so I blot. And then I'm just going to go. And it really didn't take away from the gold too much. But then when I do it on the eyeball, I definitely want it to be really dark up under the lid, but not too, um, I don't want to cover all that bright white I did. So I'm going to turn, see how I've pivoted up against there. So I don't leave a water line so I can start right there. And just go all the way across and end like that. Tuck it in the middle. 
And I think I'm going to leave it because I could mop that, but I don't think I need to. All right. I think I'm done. Let me think if I want to. Oh, geez. Kiwi just pooed. What a pain in the butt. I got it. It hit my, um, oh, she's got a poo. What can I tell you? Um, I think I'll lose a lot of brightness, but I could go, maybe I'll just paint this gold, this little lip. Like, so in other words, I like how I put the dark up against, hmm, let me see if I did it on this one. Just a little in each corner I did it. I didn't go all the way around the whole box. Um, gosh, I don't know. Um, let's add some white dots. I'm going to just put some white in one of my little bubble trays. And we'll do some dotting. And then off camera, after... I'm going to come back, like I said, with my liner brush and just fill in any of the darkness for the lines that I lost. But I think that's it, you guys. So basically, I'll just take a stylus and put a few. I want to put a white dot right here. I want to put a white dot right here. I want it to be juicy. And right here. I'm really tempted to do... I could put a small one near it. I just think they look nice. I'm going to put gold ones where the white is. But let's go around. So look, I could either fill in some of these burned ones or I'm just going to dot without. I'm just going to randomly, they look really pretty in the shaded areas. And now I just have to be careful that I don't touch where I've put the dots. That's the most important part. But yeah, I definitely like having these little pops of white in a different uh, texture, right? So because it's just straight paint, in a dot form and because I've shaded all around it's um, it's popping it's pretty popping um, I could put some gold as well and this is where you know it gets car I get carried away because I do um, love it all right all right all right all right all right stop see look there's no up oh, no there's white 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 all right I'm gonna stop so see, this is what I mean, like on here, I just put a few, you can't really notice them, but there's also, there are gold ones, this box has rocks in it, there are gold ones, and I did put gold here, but see, this one has the um, teardrops, so let me put a few gold ones. And that's it, you guys. So that didn't take too long. Um, I'm going to do another one of these rock boxes. I have to sand this. It's looking a little rough. Because I still want to tweak it one more time. I want to change a couple things and be gentler and calmer. But let's go with... Uh, I think Kiwi wants you, Matt. Ready? No, Mom. Come on, Mom. <laughs> Is the video on? Yes. I'll put her back, Mom. Okay. She did you because I just heard that noise that she was making, like burr, burr. that's like her begging noise. And um so and she can fly, so I figured I'll just see. I'll just toss her over there. He's not a huge fan. He loves Kirby more, not the birds. So those are tiny. She's yeah, I know. Um, but I am going to add a few around the box as well. Oh, you know where I like to do it? Sorry, I didn't mean to get too excited. But like right in these, I think white. I have to do white in there. Right here.
See, it's already getting congested with too much, too many dots. Is that possible, you say? Yes, it is. But there is no gold over here. So I need a gold right there. And a gold right there. And a gold right there. Very tiny little subtle. All right, but watch this. I'm gonna go with my small little tip and I'm gonna load it with white. And let's see, hopefully I don't touch any dots inside these Sorry. I like that and it kind of gets on the, I'll come in it gets on the like you can see the xiness of it anyway look here's another one the paint kind of I don't know I just like it It also kind of makes it look more starry. And this piece is definitely getting um, glitter varnish. Definitely glitter varnish. So I really stick it in there. And that is okay because it looks different than the regular white dot, I tell myself. <clears throat> it's in a hole. Okay, I think that's everything, and I know when I look back at the video, I will see anything I missed. This kind of bugs me, but whatevs. All right, that's it, you guys. See, Kiwi hears me. She's like, why did you put me back? Um, all right, I'm going to just go around and fix the any of the lines, the dark brown lines that I want to pop, like right here. I just want to make that better. All right, you guys? That's it. Thanks for watching.